Hello and welcome, I'm Noah Zox and this is Manorox. So we are trying something a little bit different today. We're going to be recording us playing and sort of figuring out this game that is in closed beta called Manorox. Uh, this is very similar to Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering, so it's pretty easy to pick up for anyone who's already playing Eternal. So some background information, this is in closed beta. So I was lucky enough to get a product key from the developer so I'm able to play it, try it out and see whether it's something that we're going to be adding to the channel, perhaps on a sort of weekly just like one video sort of basis. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try and play a game against the AI, see how that works out for us. But first off, give you some information about the sort of decks we're going to be playing as well. So there are six colours here rather than the traditional five that you see in a lot of games like Hex and Magic and Eternal as well. So we've got the colours do behave pretty much the same as well. So we've got black, blue, green, red, white. We've got gold, which is the additional colour. And I believe that's like an amalgamation of all the other colours together. And then we've got neutral, which is just like your generic sort of colourless or artifact kind of spells. So let's try a, a game with this and be able to show from that. We'll just play one versus one. I'm just going to play against the AI. So let's play against this blue guy, Mindbender. Definitely not Jason Mind Sculptor. So you'll see as well that the animations are a little bit slow there, but this game is still in open beta, so I'm sure it's going to improve and maybe speed up to the sort of feedback that people are giving. And we do have a pretty nice mulligan system though, that's already been worked out, and it's like the Hearthstone one, so you get to look at your hand, go, well that costs 7, I'm not going to be playing that for a while, and that costs 8, so we'll mulligan them. You can mulligan any number and you'll just redraw again, and this is much nicer because now I've got like a complete curve here. I will play against the blue guy which is Mindbender and each player does have a sort of hero power and the Mindbender's hero power is to summon a 0-1 illusion barrier and why that's good is because that's going to buy our opponent a lot of time because the way combat works in this game is it is a direct attacking game so you will be attacking your opponent directly or choosing whether you get blocked or where combat happens but there are two rows so there's a front row and a back row so if you go in the front row, that means you're either alert, which means you've got endurance or vigilance, or you've not attacked yet. And that means that your opponent has to attack everything in the front row to be able to get to you. If your stuff has attacked or has stealth, it'll be in the back row. Your opponent won't be able to attack those units and has to attack you instead. So you can see there's a bit of a strategy around there, whether you want to be sort of attacking with your aggressive or more valuable units just so that your opponent can't attack them as well as if you've got like a big wall that you want to be protecting yourself with you can just keep that back and not be attacking with it so to start off with we're just going to play the go and you can't attack the turn you play something unless it has got i believe it's still called charge in this game so the turn order here is that we can so we drew extra cards because like i probably played a spell over here clear mind which means each player draws two cards which i'm more than happy with because we're a big go Go big or go home ramp deck. So we do have a bunch of spells that seem appropriately costed as well. And our deck seems to be a healer, so her special power is that she can restore two health to a character, so be that herself or one of our units. Much like our unit here has just got one health, so it's not really too much. As you can see, we're unable to attack the main character, but we could attack their front row. So let's decide what we're going to play next. There we go. So these elves seem good. So the elf as we've just played is on the front row. And that means it will be able to block, but our little goat on the back row won't be able to. And uh, this is going to add us one hero mana max. And hero mana is basically how power or lands work. And as you'll see, we've got four green here. If we were to, we can put spells from other colors in our deck though. And what that'll do is if I played, say, a red spell here, it brings us down to only three of three for the green, and we'd have a new color here. I'm not sure if this deck's actually got more than one colour in it, but I'm pretty sure our opponent is red-blue, so maybe you'll see it when they get to do that. So let's have a look. We've got a nice free drop to play. So this natural selection seems a little bit less exciting now that we've mulliganed away our big units. Yeah, so it looks like it's just the old go and then we're going to attack in here get past our opponent's walls then hopefully we should be able to start beating them down pretty soon fortunately well unfortunately rather our opponent's hero power is going to be a bit of a nuisance until we're able to really get there with, with our board but uh, we do have some nice interaction here and a bunch of ways to gain life which is 
pretty good, I assume, because it looks like our opponent is a burn deck. Okay, so Medusa Ghost. This is going to be a real nuisance as well, because this gets to do something that's called Paralyze. So this is a 2-7 for 4, and as you can see, there is it requires one blue pip, but it's also going to require three generic, so it doesn't matter what that is, whether it's red, blue, green, black, anything like that. But we do have a nice answer to this, because we've got the Pacify, and this is going to sort our opponent's unit, it's going to destroy it, and it's, I'm sure it's going to restore health up to its attack. But I believe the maximum health is 35. So they're not just going to get any more from here. Yeah, so it's like Hearthstone where you have a sort of a hard cap on your life, which is nice. So I believe we've got an artifact in hand as well. Yep. So artifacts as well, for the most part, are all going to have like three charges. You're going to pay them for some mana and then for the rest of the game well until they've been sacrificed you get to do the action on them so this one is we start free health of a target lose a charge counter and then this looks like it's got three charge counters on it so as soon as the last one's gone this is going to go to our graveyard okay so i've probably got a cool one here we might not have to try and deal with and uh, this is whenever our opponent plays a sorcery, so a sorcery is the name for any spell. There's no fast speed interaction here. It's all on your turn, so much so it's half stone. And whatever they do, they're going to draw a card. It's also a really big body that's going to be able to gobble up anything we can currently play. I think we could actually ignore it though, just play the Cephsi Mermaid. Yeah, I think that's probably better. Because we can't heal any of these guys back. Although actually, I forget in the old rule, we have to attack here. Well, we don't have to attack, we could have let everything sit back. But I'd really rather just get rid of our opponent's threats here. If we play at the right fact sister is gonna be another ramp spot. So our opponent's used a paralyzed spell on our Cephsi Mermaid. Which means it won't be able to attack this turn. Uh, they've also had a pretty crushing blow next because they played a Isha Elder Mage. And when this enters play, this has a battle, sort of a battle cry or an enter play effect, and it's going to gain control of target creature with attack of two or less. And unfortunately, our opponent will be able to trade with our Cephsi Mermaid, which is not great for us. But we do have a Northern Griff Rider. Uh, this has got Rush, which is basically charge in this game. And though it has an effect when it dies, I'd much rather use this artifact over here just to gain plus two mana this turn. And this will lose a charge counter to one of the other artifacts we've got. And then this will let us give this unit plus three, plus three. So when we attack here, we don't lose our unit. Right, pass the turn. So you see, our opponent won't be able to attack this back because it's in the back row. But they have been able to so I'll keep it busy for a turn by stunning it. I've played a new artifact here. So I get to counter the first sorcery from the enemy, lose one charge counter. Okay, well. I don't really mind this, I'll just. Yeah, so I'll just play a spell that we didn't really care about just to get rid of this off play. Then excuse my hero power to heal one of my units and use the artifact to heal another one and then I suppose I'll just pass in the turn these natural selections are not looking super great because we could just play anything that we draw right now oh what's the on? our opponent has established a win condition here because they've got a grinder which is going to put the first card from my deck into my graveyard I suppose we need to, you can only have two artifacts in place, so just sacrifice the least useful one just to play this. And this is going to give us a beast every turn for the next two turns. Because this is a belt, and you can see from before, we require one green mana and free of any other color. And it's just going to summon a 2 2 beast and lose a charge counter every turn. So these stuns have been pretty good by the opponent, they're able to keep us busy for quite a long time. And here they are for a mind control effect. They're going to be stealing our 4 free, which is pretty sad for us because that means that they potentially get to 
yeah, they get to have our burial effect. Well, we'll have to attack this with the beast. I may as well create another one. Uh, they'll get to make a Gumus the Acid Dragon. And I promise I'll use their mind control, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. It's just a 6-6 six, six for 6. It's going to summon two Acid Hounds, I believe these. Yep, when they die, they deal 2 damage to the enemy hero. Uh, nothing requires healing here, so I don't need to use any of our other abilities. Though I guess we could use the natural selection there just to swap one of these beasts for the Seth Sea Mermaid. Okay, so put this for two. Hit the opponent's unit for two here because it gets to deal two damage to them if this dies. But does get another unit, which is a bit of a nuisance, but it is only a 5-6. So our 6-6 six, six gets to gobble it up, and then we're going to be able to heal. And we're able to heal our dragon back up because we've got a herbalist healer here. It's going to heal us, and then we're going to play a Cephsi Mermaid. And I believe this is the maximum amount of units in play, which looks like five. Let's use the poultice just to heal us up again. So our opponent does have a legendary in their colors, which lets them take an extra turn. But fortunately, they've got no pressure in place, so they've not been super able to make the most of that. So now it's going to be churning through our opponent's units. So just take a little while to get through it right now because you do need to click on things. We're going to play this Oaken Shield Druid, which has got Alert, which is basically Vigilance or Endurance. So even if we attack with it, it is going to stay in the front row. Summon the last beast and then pass the turn. I feel like we're in quite a good position here with the board. Our opponent does have some big whammies like this 5-7, but we are going to be able to deal with that. Our opponent's uh, managed to clone our Goomus, but they do not get the Shout effect because they'd already entered play. So I might as well play this spell. So I've got a unit here, and the way that Death Touch is worded in this game is basically just that it will kill any creature damaged by it. So I need to decide here whether I want to tr get this in to kill their dragon so we don't have to deal with it. Or if I'd rather just send in a couple of the units. I think I'm happy just to make this trade here. Also, because we have this huge 3 8 with endurance or alert, our opponent has to attack that before they can get through to us. And this is probably like quite a lot of synergy with this deck as well because it's got really high health, which means it will be able to keep healing it. But right now, it's going to be healing our little dragon. And then I suppose we've got room for one more, so we'll get a beast in here. I do like how these sort of artifacts don't last forever, you just get like free sort of goes of them. Okay, so we can actually have six in play. Okay. They'd think that the hard limit was five. So we do need to be able to get through this first, but a lot of our units can actually do it. I'd rather do this one because then we don't lose the unit, we're able to heal it up. And then we should be able to kill our opponent just with the good old dragon. There we go, so I managed to win a game with the deck. Didn't really get to show you the sort of multiple color decks because uh, see here from the sort of deck overview that there's 26 of the cards are green and the rest are generic. So let's try one that's got a couple of different colors in it. Let's try the direct damage deck because this has got two colors, so I'll really get to show you like how that works because this is red and gold. So you can imagine this is similar to like Boris and Magic or similar to like Praxis in Eternal. And this time we'll play against the sort of Necromancer guy. So if we'll take a look at the hero abilities here, our opponent's got a 
Power that doesn't sound very good, but it's got a lot of synergy with the cards that they've got, and that's going to summon a 1-1 zombie that dies at the end of the turn. They've got a lot of effects that go off when something dies, or would be sacrifice something you've got in play to do a thing, but better. So this is actually quite a good and deceptively powerful hero ability. And how's it? It's just going to be deal 1 to a target, which is similar to the Mage Mahaf, so it's going to be quite good. As not only is a little bit of reach against the opponent, you've got nothing else going on. Should be able to shoot off any small units or be able to get some extra value out of our burn spells. So, our hand seems fine. We've got one that seems a little bit risky because this destroys one of your hero mana, putting you back a little bit, but it is a two cost free free, so I think we'll keep this hand. Yeah, we'll keep this. So, it's my go, but we've got no play sadly, so we'll just pass it over. Okay, well, we'll just use our hero ability to shoot this. And if I'm going to be sacrificing one of our mana here just to create a free free, I'd much rather it be on an empty board so our opponent's not going to be able to just answer it with the threats they've got in play. A little past turn. I'm just not quite used to having to press enter and use just a press space to go. And our opponent's got a Voodoo Doll, so this still got zero power, but it can actually still attack. It's got Sneak, which means that I can't choose to attack it, it has to attack me, or have an effect that means that they would sacrifice it. And this has, when it dies, destroy a random enemy creature. So we can actually deal with this first. We'll just pop it so our opponent doesn't have a target for it. And they'll play down the Cave Mage, which is going to give all of our burn spells a little bit more reach. Got a lava ball here, and I think we'll play this because this will kill our opponent's threat as well as dealing damage to them. So, this has got cleave, which means it's like overwhelm. That unit is going to die at the end of turn anyway, so we may as well use it as a removal spell. And let's get to attack for one. So, our opponent's got shell grave, which is a little bit like haunting scream, and that will summon something back into play. It'll be the top unit from their deck. They played a zombie with Rush that dies in the turn. Let's see what we've got in hand here. Do probably want to start burning our opponent out. I'm just going to play the Dwarven Warriors here as well, which is going to destroy one of our crystals. We see after we've played a spell of a different colour, which would have destroyed all our crystals anyway, and then turned it into the cull that we actually wanted. Well, just that one damage to myself, Paxton. So, um, Dwarven Warriors went in its play, it's going to deal one damage to a target. I didn't actually realize that's what it did, so shot myself in the face, but that's perfectly fine here. So, we're going to attack the opponent for one, and hopefully, that one damage isn't going to come up. Okay, so we've got a Lava Hound here, which is going to deal damage to us if it dies. But we'll save that for a little while before that happens. So I'll play the Hammer. I believe you can use a charge on this to deal 2 damage to enemy hero. We've got attack in there and get him for... So points of damage with the hounds. Okay, so I probably got a answer to our artifact, which is a little bit sad. But they've just got a 2 3 in play here. I suppose we've got two cards in hand. So I suppose we'll. Cave Mage, then we use our hammer to kill us off because now it should do an additional one damage because of the little mage over here. I 
there. Well, we've got power. So we're not really going to be spending doing much else to use the excavation. This is going to run, return two random cards to our hand from our graveyard. And that lava ball is going to be pretty good because our opponent is only a 17. So our opponent's got a pretty good artifact in play here, which is when they get to remove a counter from it, they get to give a unit minus one, minus one. The minus one is permanent as well. So it's like serrated arrows from magic. So we do have seven so we get to play most of these plays. So I tend to prefer to use the lava ball as like a removal spell, as we said before, because it will die at the end of turn anyway. That last follow up will make the Phoenix. Okay, so the Phoenix requires four red, so that's why I couldn't actually play it. Well, I suppose we'll just make a hammer. Yeah, so we're all learning here. Yeah, so the finish is quite good, but it does require all four of it to be red. So if it has a way of sacrificing this, we're going to be able to kill one of our units at random. But it looks like they've not been able to. Oh, nice. So this deck actually looks pretty powerful. It's got a lot of rush units that are really nicely sized and it seems to be the drawback is it's going to set you back a power which seems sort of fine really uh, but we are just going to kill our opponent here luckily for us our opponent's unit just has sneak so we don't have to attack for it Because right, it's a direct attacking game, units don't all attack at the same time, so you can sort of get a feel for the game there. You can also play versus plays in this game as well. And there's also an additional mode which is seems to be pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing this in play, where you get to play 2v2. So that's going to be you and a teammate versus another team. And that seems to be one of the more interesting parts of this game is you can be able to play it with friends. And it's not just going to be sending each other messages in whatever Facebook or Discord group that you've got, where you're just going to be like, oh man, look at this amazing play we've got. You're going to be able to play together. And that sort of story building is, as always, the sort of thing that I really like from a game. Okay, so that was just a bit of a gameplay overview. Probably going to stick up another video in a couple of days where we're going to take a look at just how you build a deck exactly and how the cards sort of work out. So if you'd be interested in seeing what, please let me know. Thank you very much. I've been That Resolves, and this has been Manorox.